Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, 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 we're done, we're done sir. Everybody, we're moving on to the next. We're moving on to the next. That's not an idea. Everybody Antifa in your administration tells you the truth is a bad, is a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no Antifa, ideas. That are Antifa is a dangerous radical. All right, radical gentlemen, group. we're now moving on to the Trump and, and Biden records. With them. They'll overthrow you. When a president, I'm going to ask a question. When the president seeks a second term, it is generally a referendum on his record. But Vice President Biden, you like to quote one of your dad's sayings, which is, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. And in this case, sir, you are the alternative. Looking at both of your records, I'm going to ask each of you, why should voters elect you president over your opponent? In this segment, President Trump, you go first, two minutes. Because there has never been an administration or president who has done more than I've done in a period of three and a half years. And that's despite the impeachment hoax. And you saw what happened today with Hillary Clinton, where it was a whole big con job. But despite going through all of these things where I had to fight both flanks and behind me and, and above, there has never been an administration that's done what I've done. The greatest, before COVID came in, the greatest economy in history, lowest unemployment numbers. Everything was good. Everything was going. And by the way, there was unity going to happen. People were calling me for the first time in years. They were calling and they were saying, it's time maybe. And then what happened? We got hit, but now we're building it back up again. A rebuilding of the military, including Space Force and all of the other things. A, a fixing of the, the VA, which was a mess under him. 308,000 people died because they didn't have proper health care. He, he it was a gone. mess. And we now got a 91% approval rating at the VA, our vets. We take care of our vets. But we've rebuilt our military. The job that we've done, and, and I'll tell you something, some people say maybe the most important. By the end of the first term, I'll what have- What you're talking about is how you had the federal government inject massive amounts of capital into the economy in order to keep the wheels going and actually to push the economy into overdrive, which has been detrimental to the environment. And what no one's really talking about, because no one knows how to deal with it, is climate change. And it's not about climate change, it's about running out of oil. And if we don't figure out what to do before we run out of oil, we're in trouble. So you're going, yeah, I did a great job. What I did is I massively increased our oil production. I massively increased how many carbon emissions were getting sent out into the planet while our people are working non-productively. Me, on the other hand, what I'm pushing for is a productive economy, an economy that's moving in a certain direction, an economy that's moving toward no oil because California can say, oh yeah, by this year, which is, I can't remember what year they said, what it was like 2025 or something, or I don't know. They said, uh, California's gonna stop selling gasoline cars. And it's like, okay, that's good for you. But the reality of the situation is we are nowhere near being able to do that um, across the entire world or and, and especially across the, or or just across the entire United States, but uh, uh, but across the entire world also, because of limitations on um, raw materials. I mean, we don't have enough batteries. So um, Trump isn't moving towards a future with no oil. I have a plan to move towards a future with no oil. Biden doesn't have a plan. I have a plan. My plan is to build sustainable cities where we don't need cars and we have built-in transportation. And it's actually pretty comfortable, um, but we have to build them. And building those cities requires oil. And Donald Trump wants us to just spend oil, every man for himself. Me, I want us to use our oil in a direction which is uh, creating a sustainable future. The job that we've done, and, and I'll tell you something, some people say maybe the most important. By the end of the first term, I'll have approximately 300 federal judges and court of appeals judges, 300, and hopefully three great Supreme Court judges, justices. That is a record, the likes of which very few people, and you know one of the- This should scare people, because- Judges are supposed to be fair, right? Judges are supposed to be non-biased. Judges are supposed to be able to see through the BS, right? Donald Trump's judges that he's picked are all religious nuts, at least for the Supreme Court, which means that probably his federal judges are too, and they're specifically Catholic religious nuts that probably know the same group of people.
So people should be scared about this. He's bragging. I got more judges through than anyone. That's what he's bragging about. But you, as an American citizen, if you ever get in trouble, do you really want a religious nut judging you? I mean, maybe you do because you're religious. You're like, okay, it's great. I'm going to go to court and I'm going to tell them I'm a Christian. Maybe that's your plan, but you don't want to live in that country. Because people like me, people that are atheists, people that are agnostics, we're going to want to leave this country if we end up with a bunch of religious judges judging us. Because we want juries of our peers, and our peers aren't religious nuts, but somehow I've ended up in a religious nut city. This is where Focus on the Family is. This is where a lot of religious nuts are. The reasons I'll have so many judges, because President Obama and him left me 128 judges to fill. When you leave office, you don't leave any judges. That's like, you just don't do that. They left 128 openings. And if I were a member of his party, because they have a little different philosophy, I'd say, if you left us 128 openings, you can't be a good president. You can't be a good vice president. But I want to thank you because it gives us almost It'll probably be above that number by the end of this term. I'm sorry. 300 judges. It's a record. Looking at both your records, why should voters elect you president as opposed to President Under Trump? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Under this president, we become weaker, sicker, poor, more divided, and more violent. When I was vice president, we inherited a recession. I was asked to fix it. I did. We left him a booming economy, and he caused a recession. With regard to being weaker, the fact is that I've gone head-to-head -head with Putin and made it clear to him we're not going to take any of his stuff. He's Putin's puppy. He still refuses to even say anything to Putin about the bounty on the heads of American soldiers. Your son got and three no, no, no. million dollars. Sure. And, and by the way, Mr. Mr. my son... Mr. Payne agreed to both sides would get two minute answers uninterrupted. Well, your, your side agreed to it. And why don't you observe what your campaign agreed to as a ground rule? Okay, sir. He never keeps his word. Can you add no, back, no, 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 I'm not asking. That, that was a rhetorical question. Can you go add ahead, back sir. 30 seconds? Yeah, because, yes, okay. you may have. All right. Go ahead. So thirdly, we're poor. The billionaires have gotten much, much more wealthy by a tune of over four, three to four hundred billion dollars more just since COVID. You in the home, you got less. You're in more trouble than you were before. In terms of being more violent, when we were in office, there were 15 percent less violence in America than there is today. He's president of the United States. It's on his watch. And with regard to more divided, the nation can't stay divided. We can't be this way. And speaking of my son, the way you talk about the military, the way you talk about them being losers and being and, 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 and just being suckers. My son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot, and the people left behind oh, there really? were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking about like Hunter? Hell. Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. You're talking I don't about know. I don't know, Bo. I know Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know got thrown, Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. He wasn't dishonorably For cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of vice president, true. he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow. That is simply... I would like to respond to what Biden was saying before all hell broke loose. The, the United States is more divided than ever. And I think that is for a lot of reasons. Um, partially it's because of the way Donald Trump is where he thinks it's good politics to pit people against each other. Cause it's, it gets his side excited. Um, part of the reason is because black people got, tired of being dominated by the police and like by black people got tired of being treated like they're the police's kids and it feels sometimes like the police really want to get in everyone's business and get in the middle of everything and spy on everyone and stop every drug dealer ever and stop every criminal ever but the reality is when the police get in the middle of it a lot of the time that turns the world into a more violent place. Is the world more violent now than under Biden? I have no idea, 
but all I know is the world is a violent place, and I understand that. I think I'm the only candidate that really understands that. And I, by, by, what, what I mean is, I think it's important to understand that America could lose a war. Uh, we might not be able, it might, it might not be possible for our enemies to conquer us, but we can lose a war, that's for sure. Uh, America can collapse, that's for sure. And, um, you know, is our economy worse right now under Trump? I think our economy is way better. Um, but COVID-19 happened, so no matter what, the economy is going to be messed up. Um, now let's, let's, let's listen to everyone talk about uh, Biden's kids. Kids is that Biden's kids are running for president. And he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why was he given tens son. of millions right. of dollars? But he wasn't given right. tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, of that's President Trump. totally President Trump. discredited. We've already, this, we've already been through. Totally we've already discredited. We've, both, we've already been through this. I think the American people would rather hear about more. What happened is Hunter Biden was given a job working for a Ukrainian, I believe it's natural gas company. Um, and he was given millions of dollars to be on the board. And at the time, um, Ukraine was getting invaded by Russia. You know, Russia took Crimea, which, by the way, Vladimir Putin just got nominated for a Nobel Prize. The guy that invaded Crimea, the guy that in invaded the Ukraine. Yeah, he just got nominated for a Nobel Prize. So if there's anything we can learn is that's the world we live in. And so if you think that these labels matter, then you're stupid. So when you talk about, like, Bo Biden got a bronze star, maybe he did, but I'm just saying medals are a lot easier to get when you're a senator, when you're a senator's kid. My dad got nominated, I think, for a bronze star for carrying a wounded guy off the battlefield, and he took shrapnel uh, in his leg while he was carrying a guy off the battlefield. And uh, he, had, he has two Purple Hearts. But um, maybe three Purple Hearts. I don't know. Um, but he didn't win the Bronze Star because his dad wasn't a senator. So, um, but that doesn't mean that Bo Biden didn't sacrifice and that people didn't really like Bo Biden. But all I'm saying is, um, in my experience, Donald Trump loves the military. Like when he was at the Air Force Academy's graduation, he was pumped up and the military liked him. So, I mean, it didn't seem like... I mean, we can all talk about, oh, here, it's the military. Uh, I've seen Trump with the military. He loves the military. We've, both, we've already been through this. I think the American people would rather hear about more substantial so subjects. Well, you know, as the moderator, sir, I'm going to make a, know, a judgment when call here. three and a half million okay, dollars right. from the Let's mayor about, of Moscow, Let's that talk is about not think true. It's a that thing. report is totally Why discredited. I, I, I Mitt think, Romney on that committee said it wasn't worth taxpayers' that, money, that report. It was written for political you, reasons. You know... I'd like to talk about climate change. So would I. Okay. The forest fires in the West are raging now. They have burned millions of acres. They have displaced hundreds of thousands of people. When state officials there blame the fires on climate change, Mr. President, you said, I don't think the science knows. Over your four years, you have pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord. You have rolled back a number of Obama environmental records. What do you believe about the science of climate change and what will you do in the next four years to confront it? I want crystal clean water and air. I want beautiful clean air. We have now the lowest carbon. If you look at our numbers right now, we are doing phenomenally. But I haven't destroyed our businesses. Our businesses aren't put out of commission. If you look at the Paris Accord, it was a disaster from our standpoint. And people are actually very happy about what's going on because our businesses are doing well. As far as the fires are concerned, you need forest management in addition to everything else. The forest floors are loaded up with trees, dead trees that are years old and they're like tinder and leaves and everything else. You drop a cigarette in there, the whole forest burns down. You've got to have forest management. What do you You've believe? Got to have cuts. What do you believe about the science of climate change, sir? Uh, I believe that we have to do everything we can to have immaculate air, immaculate water, and do whatever else we can that's good. You know, we're planting a billion trees, the Billion Tree Project, and it's very exciting. Do you believe for a lot that, that human 
Pollution, gas, greenhouse gas emissions contributes to the global warming of the planet? I think planet. a lot of things do, but I think to an extent, yes. I think to an extent, yes. But I also think we have to do better management of our forests. Every year, I get the call, California's burning. California's burning. If that was cleaned, if that were, if you had forest management, good forest management, you wouldn't be getting those calls. You know, in Europe, they live their forest cities. They're called forest cities. They maintain their forests. They manage their forests. I was with the head of a major country. It's a forest city. He said, sir, we have trees that are far more, they, they ignite much easier than California. There shouldn't be that problem. I spoke with the governor about it. I'm getting along very well with the governor. But I said, you know, at some point, you can't every year have hundreds of thousands of acres of land just burned to the ground. But, sir, That's but, burning down because of a lack of but management. But, sir, if you believe in the science of climate change, why have you rolled back the Obama clean power plan, which limited carbon emissions in power plants? Why have you relaxed? Because it was driving fuel, energy prices through the sky. Why have you relaxed fuel economy standards that are going to create more pollution from cars well, and trucks? Well, not really, because what's happening is the car is much less expensive and it's a much safer car. And you're talking about a tiny difference. And then what would happen because of the cost of the car, you would have at least double and triple the number of cars purchased. We have what I've talked about is banning all cars that get less than 15 miles per gallon. So any truck, unless you have a permit for it, unless you have a reason for it. And so I'm talking about taking extreme measures and trying to cut oil consumption everywhere. Trump is talking about everyone should drive a Chevy Yukon, but at the same time, we're all going to say that we're trying to fight climate change and we want clean air, but then we're not actually for clean air. And yeah, I'm for immaculate water, but I'm not thinking about the fact that our farms in California are running out of groundwater. The groundwater is going down that fast and we need to do something about it. And that's why I proposed, proposed building a pipeline for water from the California coast to Las Vegas, where we can do desalination by concentrated solar energy. And I want to build a solar city through the entire area of Death Valley. I think that is the solution for us. I think that's the way to live without oil. I think that's the way to live comfortably. And um, I think we can make these cities beautiful. And so if you hire me as your president, I'll be like Donald Trump in the sense that I'll make things beautiful, but I'll be like me in the sense that I'll be practical and I'll make sure that our food supply is taken care of because Donald Trump's not worried about our food supply. Donald Trump wants to relax these regulations people have put on water consumption on like dishwashers and stuff like that when it's not about whether or not Michigan has enough water, it's about whether or not California has enough water and Los Angeles has enough water and I wanna make sure California has enough water because California feeds Michigan because that Central Valley is that important but I don't feel like Donald Trump wants to think about the entire United States he wants to think about the part that makes him feel good inside when he's, th when he's trying to figure out how to make the economy better. And that's why it's stupid to attack Donald Trump on the economy. He's wasteful. If we, we have to accept a little bit slower economy, we have to accept a little bit slower growth if we want to have an, econ have a, 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 an environment that's clean. Like if we want to make sure that the United States isn't the biggest polluter on the planet the old slugs out there that are 10, 12 years old. If you did that, the car would be safer. It would be much cheaper by $3,500. In, in the case of California, they've simply ignored your No, but you would take your, a lot of cars off the market because people would be able to afford a car. Now, so, and by the way, we're going to see how that turns out. But a lot of people agree with me, many people. The car has gotten so expensive because they have computers all over the place for an extra little bit okay. of gasoline. And, by the, and, and, and I'm okay with electric cars, too. I think I'm all for electric cars. I've given big incentives for electric cars. But what they've done in California is just all crazy. Right. Vice President Biden, I'd like you to, to respond to the president's climate change record. But I also want to ask you about a concern. You proposed $2 trillion in green jobs. You talk about new limits, not abolishing, but new limits on fracking, ending the use of fossil fuels to generate electricity by 2035, and zero net emission of greenhouse gases by 2050. 
The president says a lot of these things would tank the economy and cost millions of jobs. He's absolutely wrong, number one. Number two, if in fact, when, when our, during our administration, the Recovery Act, I was able to, I was in charge, able to bring down the cost of renewable energy to cheaper than or as cheap as coal and gas and oil. Nobody's going to build another uh, uh, coal-fired plant in America. No one's going to build another oil-fired plant in America. They're going to move to renewable energy, number one. Number two, we're going to make sure that we are able to take the federal fleet and turn it into a fleet that's run on their electric vehicles, making sure that we can do that. We're going to put 500,000 charging stations and all of the highways that we're going to be building in the future. We're going to build an economy that, in fact, is going to provide for the ability of us to take four million buildings and make sure that they, in fact, are weatherized in a way that, in fact, will, they'll, they'll emit significantly less gas and oil because the heat will not be going out. There's so many things that we can do now to create thousands and thousands of jobs. We can get to net zero in terms of energy production by 2035, not only not costing people jobs, creating jobs, creating millions of good paying jobs, not 15 bucks an hour, but prevailing wage by having a new infrastructure that in fact is green. And the first thing I will do, I will rejoin the Paris Accord. I will join the Paris Accord because with us out of it, look what's happening. It's all falling apart. And talk about someone who has no, no relationship to, with foreign policy. Brazil, the rainforests of Brazil are being torn down, are being ripped down. More, more carbon is absorbed in that rainforest than every bit of carbon that's emitted in the United States. Instead of doing something about that, I would be gathering up and making sure we had the, com the countries of the world coming up with $20 billion and say, here's $20 billion. Stop, stop tearing down the forest. And if you don't, then you're going to have significant economic consequences. What about, consequences what about the argument that President Trump basically says that you have to balance environmental interests and economic interests, and he's drawn his line? Well, he hadn't drawn a line. He still, for example, makes sure that we, he wants to make sure that methane's not a problem. We can, you, you can now emit more methane without it being a problem. Methane. Gotcha. This is a guy who says that you don't have to have mileage standards for automobiles that exist now. This is a guy who says that, well, the fact gotcha. is, gotcha. It, 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 it's all true. And here's He's the deal. He's talking about the Green he, New Deal, and it's not too. I agree that we need to make sure the economy is taken care of. We need to make sure people are taken care of. It's not about whether or not we can make sure billionaires are taken care of. It's about whether or not we can make sure our kids, kids, kids are taken care of. And Donald Trump is taking care of himself right now and his, and his children who are older. Donald Trump's not taking care of my children, which uh, they don't exist yet. Joe Biden, it sounds like, He's trying, but Joe Biden doesn't have all the tools that it takes to be a leader in this, in this area. I do. I understand technology. I have a plan. I'm not just saying I want to spend money on it. I'm saying here's how I want to spend money on it. Um, I'm talking about partnering with other countries to help us build infrastructure and letting people immigrate to the United States. I'm, I'm talking about letting Chinese immigrants move to Nevada or at least, or to Death Valley, which includes California, parts of California. I'm talking about taking serious, serious steps to change the future. Um, Donald Trump's talking about maintaining the status quo on the economy. Joe Biden, he's talking about really pushing the dollar because what really matters is that the price of things don't skyrocket because of what the government's doing. And when Donald Trump says Biden will tank the economy, he's saying Biden's going to make the price of things skyrocket because he's going to print out so much cash that he gives to people, which, by the way, that's what Trump's doing. And right now, who's protecting the economy? It's our illegal drug labs. We, we protect the economy by getting foreign currency. And it's a very difficult thing for a lot of people to deal with, not Trump necessarily, because Trump's from Las Vegas, or he's not from Las Vegas, he's from New York, but he... He's a, he's a Trump. I view him as a Las Vegas con artist personally, but Trump. Oh gosh. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I 
because I lost train of thought because I insulted him too much. Billion I'm, or 20 billion, as you said, I'm it's 100 trillion dollars. I'm talking about where they the want to Biden rip down plan. buildings and, uh, and rebuild the building. No, it's the dumbest, not, most ridiculous, not where airplanes are out of business, where two car systems are out, where not they want true. to take out the cows, too. Not you know, that's true. not true either. Right. Not this true. is a this is a 100 simply, trillion. Look, that's more money than our country could make. In a hundred years, if we're not going by the case. All right, let me, will, let me, let me, let me, let me, because, because I actually, yes. wait a minute, sir. I actually <laughs> have studied your plan, and it includes upgrading four million buildings, weatherizing yes. two million homes over four years, building one and a half million energy efficient homes. So the question becomes, some, the president is saying, I think some people. What I was saying is, that I think I was, what I was trying to get to before is that I understand these computers that Donald Trump's complaining about, the computers that are helping the cars get better gas mileage. I understand how the computers work. Donald Trump doesn't. He wants to get rid of the computers. Oh, the computers are making everything so expensive. To, so that's why we should just get rid of computers and have bad gas mileage. Screw good gas mileage. But I'm talking about, uh, but I have studied beyond car, well, not, not beyond car gas mileage. I'm sure that those computers are very sophisticated. But I've studied um, power grid computers that help uh, make things more efficient. And when, when Biden's talking about making the power grid more efficient, I actually can talk to this computer scientists who are trying to figure out how to do it too and give my input and not just say, oh, here's some money. And that's why I, I think I'm a better candidate for president as far as um, saving the planet goes. I think some people who support the president would say that sounds like it's going to cost a lot of money and hurt the economy. What it's going to do is going to create thousands and millions of jobs, good paying jobs. But let him finish, sir. He doesn't know how to do that. $100 they, billion. Dollars. The fact is it's going to create millions of good paying jobs and these tax incentives to people for people to weatherize, which he wants to get, get rid of. It's going to make the economy much safer. Look how much we're paying now to deal with the hurricanes. With the deal with, by the way, he has an answer for hurricanes. He said maybe we should drop a nuclear weapon on them. They may. I fall. never said that That's at what, all. He did you say You made that. it up. Uh, and here's the deal. You make up a we, lot of We are going to be in a position where we can create hard, hard, good jobs by making sure the environment is clean and we all are in better shape. We spend billions of dollars now, billions of dollars on floods, hurricanes, rising seas. We're in real trouble. Look what's happened just in the Midwest with these storms that come through and wipe out entire sections and counties in Iowa. They didn't happen before. They're because of global warming. We make up 15% of the world's problem. We, in fact, but the, the rest of the world, we've got to get them to come along. That's why we have to get back into, back into the Paris Accord. All right, gentlemen. Well, wait we, a minute, Chris. So why didn't he do it for 47 years? You were vice president. Why didn't you get the world? China sends up real dirt into the air. Russia does, India does, they all do. We're supposed to be good. And by the way, China doesn't pol or China pollutes more than us, I think. I'm pretty sure. But um, like they're, they're into the air. I'm talking about they're they're as far as like carbon emissions. But they also have 1.5 billion people and they're also manufacturing for us. So China's carbon emissions are our carbon emissions, whether or not you want to admit it or not. That's the problem with everyone. No one wants to I, actually it does sound like Biden's trying to say this. The world's carbon emissions are our carbon emissions, and we need to start thinking of it like that, or else we're all screwed. Because we all live on the same planet together, and we all have to deal with what happens to the planet together. So this needs to be a team effort, but someone doesn't want to be on the team. Someone doesn't know how to lead the team. I'll lead the team. And that's why I should be president. He made a couple of statements. The Green New Deal is a hundred trillion dollars. That is not, not my billion. plan. That's the Green uh, well, New you Deal. Well, you want to rebuild every building. You want to rebuild every building. If he knew anything about, if he knew anything about, he made a statement gentlemen. about the military. He said, gentlemen. "I said something about the military." Okay. He and his friends made it up, and then they went with it. I never said it. Okay. That is what not he true. did. Sir, is he you're said, done in this segment. He called Mr. the military Mr. Vice stupid President. bastards. I, I and did he said not it on say tape. It. He uh, said Mr. stupid uh, please, bastards. Please, he said it. Stop. I would never say I would that. I play, play it. Play it. Go ahead, Mr. You're Vice President. Uh, 
answered his qu his final question. The final question is, I can't remember which of all his rantings. <laughs> I'm, having having much. Much. I'm having a little trouble That's myself. Right. But, uh, and, and about the economy and about this question of what it's going to cost. The, the, economy. the economy. I mean, the Green New Deal the, and the, the idea of what, what the, your the environmental change deal, will do. The Green New Deal will pay for itself as we move forward. We're not going to build plants that, in fact, are great polluting plants. Do you support build the Green New Deal? Pardon me? Do you support that? No, I don't support the Green oh, New Deal. Oh, you don't? Oh, well, well that's a big let, statement. I support that means you the just lost the no. radical left. I, su okay. I support oh, the don't. Biden plan that I put forward. Okay. The Biden plan, which is different than what he calls the radical Green New Deal. All right, gentlemen, final segment, election integrity. As we meet tonight, millions of Americans are receiving mail-in ballots or going to vote early. How confident should we be that this will be a fair election? And what are you prepared to do over the next five plus weeks? Because it'll not only be to election day, but also counting some ballots, mail-in ballots after election day. What are you prepared to do to reassure the American people that the next president will be the legitimate winner of this election in this final segment? Mr. Vice President, you go first. I'm gonna actually go first. I've proposed allowing people to vote by FaceTime, pulling out their phone and talking to someone, showing identification, showing multiple forms of identification, proving that you're, you're, you're yourself, and then um, maybe having a ballot that you fill out and you can show them through the, through the camera or talking or both at the same time, talking through your ballot. The reason I think that we don't have a fair election if we don't have um, distance voting like this is because um, people like me who are afraid of COVID-19 because we're high risk, people that should be afraid of COVID-19 because they're high risk, but they um, ignore it, they should be afraid to go to the poll because that's a lot of people going to the same location from the same area and spreading germs. And we can wipe down things, but what about our shoes? Are we gonna constantly wipe down the floor? So all I'm saying is, um, we're supposed to have a fair election according to the Constitution. We're not going to have a fair election. It seems like the Republicans are always bent on trying to prevent people from voting, and that's because they know that some people are going to vote no matter what. Republicans vote no matter what. Democrats don't. Democrats need to be inspired, and that's the problem with Joe Biden. The other problem is, in a lot of states, you can't even vote for me because they don't allow, allow write-in votes at all, which I think is unconstitutional. In the digital age, it's very easy to allow people to do write-in votes. I've been running for president for almost a year now, so my vote should, or so votes for me should be included. They're not included because I need to have uh, eight people from Colorado who will represent me in the electoral college who I got approval from nine months ago. I think that's completely unconstitutional. If I win the election, if I actually win the election, then that, that's all that should matter. And, it should, and, 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 and if it's possible to count those votes, then you should just count them and then we can figure it out at the end. No, we're just not going to count them. That's what the judges say because we have activist judges in the United States. Judges that want to push their agenda. A lot of the time that's a religious agenda. And that's why we have seven out of nine Catholics on the freaking Supreme Court. So um, I'm for distance voting. Trump's going to say, oh, no, we got to make sure it's fair. And everyone goes in person and coughs on each other. And everyone that um, is afraid of COVID-19 isn't going to, won't show up. So that's great because all my supporters aren't afraid of COVID-19. And Joe Biden's going to go, well, there's nothing I can do about it because I'm stuck following the law. And I'm going to say, this is crap. We don't live in a democracy if you're not allowed to vote for me. Prepared to let people vote. They should go to IWillVote.com. Decide how they're going to vote, when they're going to vote, and what means by which they're going to vote. His own Homeland Security Director, and as well as the FBI Director, says there is no evidence at all that mail-in ballots are a source of, of being manipulated and cheating. They said that. 
The fact is that there are going to be millions of people because of COVID that are going to be voting by mail and ballots, like he does, by the way. He sits behind the Resolute Desk and sends his ballot to Florida, number one. Number two, we're going to make sure that those people who want to vote in person are able to vote because enough poll watchers are there to make sure they can socially distance. The polls are open on time, and their polls stay open until the votes are counted. And this is all about trying to dissuade people from voting because he's trying to con- to scare people into thinking that it's not going to be legitimate. Show up and vote. You will determine the outcome of this election. Vote, vote, vote. If you're able to vote early. Just to be clear, no matter what, this is not going to be a legitimate election because you can't vote for me in Nevada. You can't vote for me in Oklahoma where I was born. You can't vote for me in a lot of states because they don't allow write-in votes. You have to have already become chummy with the people that are in the political parties in the state, and you have to go get signatures, and you have to have millions of dollars. You can't just run a campaign based on your ideas. We don't, we don't, we don't live in that country, even though the technology is there. The technology is there to allow us to vote, and that's why I came up with an idea for a blockchain voting system that I don't want to explain, but it's basically just using um, linked like array, arrays, like linked JSON objects that are hashed to connect one another. So it's basically a blockchain and it would allow people to go through all the votes um, and make sure that all the votes counted. And we could put a hash on television saying, here's what the hash of the entire vote count vote is, or here's what the hash is of your region. Um, and then people would know that their vote counted because I think the biggest concern a lot of people have is that their votes not counting. And, Um, I think some people don't want a lot of votes to count. And I think some people want to make sure that votes for me don't count because he's afraid that I'm going to take his votes. And I don't understand why we can't allow people to do write-in votes. It doesn't make sense. I think it's unconstitutional not to allow write-in votes. If you're able to vote early in your state, vote early. If you're able to vote in person, vote in person. Vote whatever way is the best way for you, because you will. He cannot stop you from being able to determine the outcome of this election. And in terms of whether or not when the votes are counted and they're all counted, that will be accepted. If I win, that will be accepted. If I lose, that will be accepted. But by the way, if in fact he says he's not sure what he's going to accept, well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. Because if we get the votes, it's going to be all over. He's going to go. He can't stay in power. It won't happen. It won't happen. So vote. Just make sure you understand you have it in your control to determine what this country is going to look like the next four years. Is it going to change? You get four more years of these lies. Mr. President, two minutes. So when I listened to Joe talking about a transition, Uh, There's been no transition from when I won. I won that election. And if you look at crooked Hillary Clinton, if you look at all of the different people, uh, there was no transition because they came after me trying to do a coup. They came after me spying on my campaign. They started from the day I won and even before I won, from the day I came down the escalator with our first lady. They were a disaster. They were a disgrace to our country. And we've caught them. We've caught them all. We've got it all on tape. We've caught them all. And by the way, you gave the idea for the Logan Act against General Flynn. You better take a look at that because we caught you in a sense. And President Obama was sitting in the office. He knew about it, too. So don't tell me about a free transition. As far as the ballots are concerned, it's a disaster. A solicited ballot Okay, solicit it is okay. You're soliciting, you're asking, they send it back, you send it back. I did that. If you have an unsolicited, they're sending millions of ballots all over the country. There's fraud, they found them in creeks, they found some with the name Trump, just happened to have the name Trump just the other day in a waste paper basket. They're being sent all over the place. They sent two in a Democrat area, they sent out a thousand ballots, everybody got two ballots. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. The other thing, it's nice on November 3rd, you're watching and you see who won the election. And I think we're going to do well because people are really happy with the job we've done. But you know what? We won't know. We might not know for months because these ballots are going to be all over. Take a look at what happened in Manhattan. Take a look at what happened in New Jersey. Take a look at what happened in Virginia and other places. They're not losing 2%, 1%, which, by the way, is too much. An election could be won or lost with that. They're losing 30 and 40%. It's a fraud, and it's a shame. And can you imagine where they say, uh, you have to have your ballot in by November 10th. November 10th. That means that's seven days after the election, in theory, 
should have been announced. Okay. We have major yes. states no, time, with that. Sir, All run by two Democrats. Two minutes is two minutes. All you're, run you're, by you're, Democrats. It's President a Trump, it's a rigged I, I, election. I, you're going to be able to continue. You have been charging for months that mail-in balloting is going to be a disaster. You say it's rigged, That's that it's going to lead to fraud. But in 2018, in the last midterm election, 31 million people voted mail-in voting. That was a quarter, more than a quarter, of all the voters that year cast their ballots by mail. Now that millions of mail-in ballots have gone out, what are you going to do about it? And are you counting on the Supreme Court, including a Justice Barrett, to settle any dispute. Yeah, I, th I think I'm counting on them to look at the ballots, definitely. I don't think we'll, I hope we don't need them in terms of the election itself. But for the ballots, I think so. Because what's happening is incredible. I just heard, I read today, where at least 1% of the ballots for 2016 were invalidated. They they take them, we don't like them, we don't like them. But they what throw are you going to do about it if there right. are millions of ballots going out what right What you do now, is you go do? and vote. You do a solicited ballot, no, no, and that's I'm okay, not, I know or you complaint. go and vote. I'm asking you about the fact that millions of people... You go and vote. You go and no, vote. But like they, is, like they used to in the old... Millions of people... You either do, Chris, a solicited ballot where you're sending it in, they're sending it back, and you're sending... They have mailmen with lots of it. Did you see what's going on? Take a look at West Virginia, mailmen selling the ballots. They're being sold. They're being dumped in rivers. This is a horrible thing for our country. There is no. This is not. There is no. This is not going to end well. There is okay. no evidence. This is that. not Vice, going Vice to President end Biden. well. Five states in fact, have had mail-in ballots for the last decade or more. Five, including two Republican states. Is it just me, or does it sound like Donald Trump is threatening violence? Because this is not going to end well. Uh, it might be months before we figure it out. Proud Boys stand by or some crap. Because um, my understanding is the military is who's supposed to stand by and defend the Constitution. You're not supposed to find a random militia that goes to protest and punches people in the face. Because I don't know if Trump realizes this, but these white nationalist, radical Christian Militia people have been around the United States for a long time. Bill Clinton had to deal with them once. I'm pretty sure they, um, what they do, but put landmines around. Um, this was when Bill Clinton was the governor of Arkansas. There was, there was a militia group that had like landmines around their house or something. And they had all the, they had this, this massive stockpile of weapons. So what I'm saying is these people have been planning a war for a long time. It sounds like Donald Trump is wanting them to be on his side, but... Those people are, are I mean, the, the crazy ones are few and far between. There are a lot of them with weapons, though, and I know them because I'm from Texas. And I think those people should be on my side because you should be on the side of your future because I want the people that have guns to be on the side of making sure that our country has, um, has a future. Donald Trump's not for the future. Donald Trump is for himself. Donald Trump is for his business. Donald Trump is for making sure his company doesn't go bankrupt because they're going to go bankrupt because he has made very poor business decisions. Donald Trump is not for you. Ballot, it's sent to you. It's sent to your home. What we're saying is, they're saying is that it has to be a postmark by the time, by election day. If it doesn't get in till the 7th, 8th, 9th, it still should be counted. He's just afraid of counting the votes. Because You're those wrong. Are the outcome. You're wrong. I, no, I, I want to continue votes. with you on this, I love if, Vice President vote. Biden. Because Chris, he's so wrong in, when he makes a fact, statement no, like that. Excuse me, Vice President Biden, the biggest problem, in fact, over the years with mail-in voting has not been fraud historically. It has been that sizable numbers, sometimes hundreds of thousands of ballots are thrown out because they have not been properly filled out or there is some other irregularity or they missed the deadline. So the question I have is, are you concerned that the Supreme Court with a Justice Barrett will settle any dispute? I am concerned that any court would settle this because here's the deal. When you, when you file, when you get a ballot and you fill it out, you're supposed to have an affidavit. If you didn't know, you have someone say that this is me. You should be able to, if in fact you can verify that's you when the, before the ballot is thrown out, that's sufficient to be able to count the ballot because someone made a mistake and not dotting the correct I. Who they voted for, testify, say who they voted for, 
say it's you, that is totally legitimate. All right. Excuse Finally, me, no, no, no. when you I have, have a 80 final, million I, ballots gentlemen, I have a final sent in and swamping the I, I, system, you, 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 you know it can't be done. You know it can't. And already all right. there's been so now fraud. Mail service final, delivers 185 million ballots. Wait a minute, gentlemen. In the final question, in, in eight ballots. states, we can keep talking. It's, it's in a, eight it's states, election workers are Very prohibited, good. currently by law, eight states, from even beginning to process. With my idea... And we, if we had 80 million ballots, we'd still have all these workers that are working in the area of the person who sent in their ballot that could call them over FaceTime and confirm the situation, and that person would still be allowed to vote. And so I'm all about making sure they can vote, but I think doing it through FaceTime is easier because you know your vote worked. You don't have to worry about, oh, I hope my ballot worked. Instead, you can just be like, hey, guess what? Um, I, this is who I'm voting for. Thanks for counting my vote. And then they go, okay, here's your confirmation number. And then you're set. It's a lot easier than not knowing if your vote counts. Yes. Ballots, even take them out of the envelopes and yes. flatten them until election day. That means that it's likely because there's going to be a huge increase in mail-in balloting that we are not going to know on election night who the winner is, that it could be days, it could be weeks, could be months. until we find out who the, the, the new president is. So I, first for you, sir, finally for the, for the vice president, I hope neither of you will interrupt the other. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm during this extended period, not to engage in any civil unrest? And will you pledge tonight that you will not declare victory until the election has been independently certified. President Trump, you I'm go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. As you know, today there was a big problem. In Philadelphia, they went in to watch. They were they're called poll watchers, a very safe, very nice thing. They were thrown out. They weren't allowed to watch. You know why? Because bad things happen in Philadelphia, bad things. And Are I you- am urging... I am urging my people. I hope it's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair You're election, what? I am 100% on board. But if I... What exactly do you want them to watch? Do you want them to check people's IDs? Like, I mean, I don't understand here. I mean, I don't understand the situation here. You want to... During COVID-19, you want to add more people to the polling locations so that the rooms have more people in them when everyone's trying to socially distance so that they can watch what exactly? See tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated. I can't go along with that. And I'll tell and you what, what, what does that from mean, a common go sense, does that mean you're going to tell people to take to It the means screen? you have a fraudulent election. You're and sending you out 80 do? million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped. To, these people aren't equipped to handle it. Number one. Number two, okay. they cheat. They cheat. Hey, they found ballots in a waste paper basket three days ago, and they all had the name military ballots. They were military. They all had the name Trump on them. Vice President Biden. You think that's good? Vice President Biden, final question for you. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm while the vote is counted, and will you pledge not to declare victory until the election is independently certified? Yes, and here's the deal. We count the ballots, as you pointed out. Some of these ballots in some states can't even be opened until election day. And if there's thousands of ballots, it's going to take time to do it. And by the way, our military, they've been voting by ballots for since the end of the Civil War, in effect. And that's, and that's what's happen, going to happen. Why was it not? Why is it for them somehow not fraudulent? It's the same process. It's honest. No one has established at all that there is fraud related to mail-in ballots that somehow it's a fraudulent process. It's already been established. It's a, Take a look at Carolyn no, Maloney's I, I, I race. I asked you, you yeah. had an opportunity look to respond. Look at Carolyn Maloney. Go ahead. They have no idea what Vice happened. Vice President Biden, go ahead. He has no idea what he's talking about. Here's the deal. The fact is, I will accept it, and he will too. You know why? Because once the winner is declared after all the, all the ballots are counted, all the votes are counted, that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end of it. And if it's me, in fact, fine. If it's, if it's not me, I'll support the outcome. And I'll be a president, not just for the Democrats. I'll be a president for Democrats and Republicans. And this guy, I want to see fact, an honest okay. ballot count. Gentlemen, we, you say that's the end Chris, of it. This is the I end of this debate. Honest ballot count. We're going to leave it there. Too. 
Uh, To be continued as in more debates as we go on. Uh, President Trump, Vice President Biden, it's been an interesting hour and a half. I want to thank you both for participating in the first of three debates that you have agreed to engage in. We want to thank Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland Clinic for hosting this event. The next debate, sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates, will be one week from tomorrow, October 7th, at the University of Utah in